guys. Uh, I'm gonna try something today. Just, uh, I think I've done videos kind of like this before where I just babble on about something, um, but it's not always movies, but today it's gonna be a movie. <laughs> um, so, uh, sometimes while I sew, I just, like, put movies on in the background just for, like, some noise and stuff, and sometimes I watch some things I wouldn't have otherwise watched just because I'm like, eh, well, I don't really have to pay attention. Um, but <laughs> yesterday, while I was sewing, I put on the film Sing in the background and ended up, uh, watching it. Not like, uh, not because I was, like, really, like, liking it, but because, uh, it's really interesting. So, I, as an adult human being who actually works in theater, uh, w had a different view of this film, obviously, than the intended target audience of, like, children and families. Um, this is clearly meant to be just, like, this, like, oh, it's like a feel-good film about, like, being brave enough to perform and brave enough to do big things and all of that. Um, but for me, <laughs> it's this really interesting story about, like, how real it is that theater is super unprofitable. Like, <laughs> people who work in theater, uh, unless you're, like, genuinely, like, the most famous actor at the most famous theaters on Broadway, you don't really make that much money. And, um, like, it's something like one out of three Broadway shows actually fail to make their money back. Um, so actually even being, like, a big Broadway show does not guarantee success whatsoever. Um, you can work so hard and get your show all the way to Broadway and close in a couple of weeks because you can't afford to keep <laughs> your show up uh, because of the maintenance costs of every day you're spending money to put the show on. It's not just one lump sum that you put on to, like, build the set and pay the actors. Like, you have to keep paying the actors. You have to keep paying the stagehands. Um, these are all things that, like, maybe sound obvious, but also, like, not everyone thinks about. And there's, there, <laughs> there's a certain element where that's not talked about in this film, because it's a kid's film, and, like, they don't really want to... They just want to save the theater or whatever, um, but it's it's so real. Like, this this koala, I'm gonna tell you right now, I do not remember any of the character names. I just remember what animals they were <laughs> and whether they could hold a microphone or not. Um, but, like, this koala running this theater might not have done anything all that wrong. At all. Like, he could have done lots of successful shows and still just have ended up not able to afford this theater anymore. Um, it's, it's very, it's, it's on a certain tone, like, very real about that. Like, he feels like a failure now, but he, like, they don't, I don't remember the beginning that well because I wasn't paying that much attention until I realized what was going on. But <laughs> it seemed like they didn't really go, like, too far into, like, had everything he'd done been an actual failure or had it been just a middling success that he hadn't actually made money on. Um, and the fact that he... And, and so it's weird for me knowing the production side of theater and knowing that um, he, he wasn't looking for investors. Um, his one friend who's rich, the, the sheep guy, uh, he kind of asked that guy for his parents' money, and then that guy was like, eh, and then he didn't pursue them as further investors. He did not pursue the grandmother sheep as an investor. Uh, he, he, they did not show him pursuing any investors or having doors shut in his face because investors were fed up with not getting their money back from him, which is all things that I assume would happen and just aren't details that are for a kid's film, <laughs> but they're all things that definitely, like, lead down that path, like, and it's, it's just, it's so entirely possible that he really wasn't that much of a failure and just happened to, like, have hit, like, a bad patch and 
all it takes is, you know, <laughs> whatever leniency uh, his, his debtors, the bank, was willing to give him to run out, and you're done for. Um, and it, like, theater is that risky. And there was an element of that reality in this movie, which is why I, like, really started paying attention, because it's like, oh man, that's so real. <laughs> and it's, um, like, the movie is basically, like, the most basic, like, put on the benefit to save the daycare center or whatever, um, plot, except that it's not just a daycare, it's an entire theater that by, by the, by the, like, turning point of the movie is actually destroyed, so it has to be rebuilt, even. Um, so, so what's, uh, also interesting for me is, like, first of all, that, <laughs> that, all that equipment, um, that he, like, still had, or found, or, I don't, like, where, where did the LED wall in the final concert come from? I'm like, did, did they have that the whole time? Did they, like, take out another loan and rent that? Where did that come from? What the heck? There's a point, like, in a rehearsal where they destroy an entire truss of lighting, and there's not a moment where the guy's like, uh, those are all the lights I have. <laughs> um, because you would think those are things like, yes, you would keep them, but on the other hand, like, what... The amount you keep depends on what kind of theater you are and all of that, and they're just, like, it's a gag where this entire truss full of lights falls and every single light breaks and nobody acts like it's a big deal. <laughs> like, it's like, except for the, like, mouse, because it almost fell on him and he's like, oh my god, you almost killed me, which, yes, is a big deal too, but also thousands of dollars worth of equipment was just broken. <laughs> and me, as someone who, like, works with lights and knows how much they cost and what a bitch they are to fix when they're not even that broken. Um, I'm just like, oh my god. That was something that needed a reaction bigger than like, ah. Uh. Yeah, the, the LED wall at the end that, and I flipped my lid. The, the elephant character, it's, it's so great. She was so shy, and then she, like, performs in front of everybody, and she's, like, amazing, and it's like, all right, that's really nice and heartwarming, but she starts jumping around, and the set falls apart in this, they're performing in the theater that's already broken. It's, it's just the, like, unsafe rubble of a theater, and she starts jumping around, and first of all, I'm thinking, like, they, they, they do the, like, trick out, like, the, the archway that they put back together at the entrance is gonna fall over. It doesn't. What happens is, the LED wall, excuse me, these things are so expensive. If you've been to a show where you've seen the, the LED wall, the video wall in the back, they're so expensive. And they're very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but, and and this, this elephant is jumping around, and I guess the theater was on a cliff the whole time, which I didn't notice until right then. This thing, the rigging on this cannot withstand an elephant jumping around downstairs and falls over backwards off the freaking cliff. And me, I'm just having a panic attack, because I'm like, that is such expensive equipment. And it's it's freaking animated. It's not real, like, I know that, but, like, my, my brain is like, no. <laughs> like, I get worried when I accidentally smash my face into, like, LED panels, uh, when a show comes through. Because that's a thing that's happened. You get them where they're, like, hanging right at face level, and they're like, hey, these things are hanging right at face level, and you still walk right into it, because some days you're just an idiot. Um, but, like, 
and and I get more worried about the screen. I'm like, uh, 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 please keep working. And they're they're like, I mean they're delicate, but they're not like so delicate that me just like bumping the edge of my head is gonna destroy it uh, generally. <laughs> <laughs> but like still I'll be like ow oh oh no screen are you okay screen uh <laughs> but like because one of them is worth more than my entire life <laughs> like like my life is not um I mean monetarily obviously <laughs> um obviously I think that life is more important than a computer screen but um there's not much point to living in that much debt. <laughs> um, like, these things are so expensive, and that moment for me was so heart-poundingly like, <gasps> holy crap. <laughs> but you know, but then there's a nice city scene behind her, and like, the full mood, so it's like, she just keeps going. I mean, yeah, because you just keep going. I mean, it didn't obstruct anyone. There's just, because it like, it like, literally falls like down a like cliffside a hillside like a really big hill or something um and there's there's no um there's no acknowledgement of where it goes <laughs> i'm like that is uh that is pretty bad like that could potentially like falling on someone underneath all of that that like just the money from it, even if it doesn't do any damage, <laughs> like, yikes. So not addressed by this film. Another thing baffling, absolutely baffling about the end for me, and this has nothing to do with theater, when the, the father gorilla breaks out of jail to go tell his son how, like, great he is and how much he loves him, and I'm just like, am I supposed to want this to happen? Like, this guy just broke out of jail, is that... Like, I know it's supposed to be, like, heartwarming, cause, like, they were having problems, and I'm like, can't you just call him? And be like, I saw your performance, son, come visit me at the jail again. <laughs> cause... That... Damage to the jail, the fact that he broke out at all... <laughs> um... That's so much worse for that character. That character just made his life so much worse. <laughs> um, so I'm like, am I, am I supposed to want this to happen? Because there's a part of me that wanted it to not happen because I'm like, no, but this is the turning point where like the, the dad gorilla who's like a shitbag gang or like mobster, like whatever, like some crazy thief guy. Um, and, like, suddenly, like, has a turn of heart and, like, he's, he's maybe gonna be a good father now from jail. Um, <laughs> but I'm, like, but it seems so messed up to me because, like, he breaks out of jail and makes things so much worse. Again, not really addressed. The guy's just like, all right, I'm going back to jail now. <laughs> and I'm just like, what? <laughs> what is happening? Uh, and every time that mouse, <laughs> this mouse character that I'm still not sure you're supposed to like him by the end, like, like, I think you're supposed to like him, but he also is entirely driven by, like, ego, the entire, like, so much ego the entire time and never, like, learns humbleness like he doesn't go back to the performance because he realizes he cares about people and yet they sort of try to put that in there but the inciting incident for him to go back to the performance is seeing everyone else doing so well and going like oh no i want attention is the way i read it and that was that was weird that was a weird moment uh for me personally like this mouse just like didn't seem to fit in the rest of the movie. Um, but every time, every time, 
And I, like, yeah, uh, it's funny, like, there's no mouse-sized microphone, um, which you would think there would be, but, like, maybe that's the equipment that the koala got rid of, the, the things that were sized for really small animals, because it's a world where there's animals of all kinds of sizes, and they, like, had a mic stand tall enough for a giraffe, but not a microphone small enough for a mouse. So this mouse has <laughs> this wireless, just, like, really standard microphone and sings into the bottom of it, the dome. And I'm gonna let you know something. <laughs> that part of the microphone does not work. Like, you you need to sing into the top of it. Um, I have a lot of experience now, like, showing people how to use a microphone because, believe it or not, microphones do not work the way you think they work. Um, they have... They, Different microphones have different pickup patterns, so the, like, ideal spot on them is different. But generally, just, like, the ones with, like, the round, like, metal cover, uh, the really standard stuff that you always see, um, the way things are usually drawn in animation, usually what you see, like, the Spice Girls doing their Victoria's Secret, whatever, with some, like, blinged out ones, whatever, like, that really standard shape that everybody knows. There are lots of things that people do because they see it on TV or, like, they see some crazy famous person doing it because you, uh, you really, it's really hard, especially, um, even if they're, like, not, like, famous artists, but, like, if they're an invited artist in a, in a space, you can ask them to use the microphone the right way, but they're gonna use the microphone how they want to use it, um, but not all performers actually use their microphones in an optimal position. Um, like, holding the microphone by the head of it and talking into your hand doesn't work. Like, covering the microphone and then trying to talk into it doesn't work. Talking into the bottom of the microphone, as this mouse had to do, doesn't work. Like, that kind of microphone, like, the best way to get the best sound is to get your mouth pretty close to the direct center and this is this is the best pickup but the mouse totally like <laughs> sings into the bottom of it and then like stands it on the bottom and like spins it around and I'm like so they're choreographing that so that they can turn the microphone actually right off right before that happens, because if you were to actually try to do something like that, one, it would not be as balanced as that, um, and two, it would make a horrible sound. So even if you take cartoon physics, you're still thinking, that microphone is still, like, picking up noise, right? Like, so it would, it would make a sound like you had, like, dropped it and it was doing something on the ground, and it would not be a good sound. Um, but, of course, it's... It's just some cartoon movie, um, so it doesn't matter. But that's, like, those are the things that are happening in my mind. I'm like, this is... That would not produce the sound they want. That would make bad sounds. <laughs> like, all of that. And just... The ending was really, um, the ending of Sing is played off like, tra -la -la, it's a happy ending, we got an investor, and we rebuilt the theater, and we're reopening. Unfortunately, uh, for, <laughs> and I guess the same is true of, like, any movie where they, like, reopen the, like, whatever center, the, like, community center, um, like, the same thing is true. It's an ongoing thing, except that with theater, it's such, it's such a thing where they could open their first show and be in so much debt from rebuilding that theater and immediately lose it again. Um, I guess, I, although I guess the, the idea is that the, um, the really ridiculously wealthy sheep the, the one who was, like, a really famous performer or something, um, she buys the theater, and I assume she also funds the rebuild, um, 
so perhaps like she uh, actually becomes some sort of producer and actually like gets other animals to invest like other rich animals um, maybe but like to me that just the theater reopening reopening isn't really like a happy ending because there's so much financial issue like so much more financial issue than they started with because before this guy had a theater that his dad bought for him <laughs> and now this really ridiculously wealthy woman <laughs> has bought and rebuilt a theater and they don't address whether she's just it's just a vanity project and she's just gonna keep it open you know forever because she um has just established mounds of wealth and whatnot um and maybe it is uh but it's it's a it's a real lesson in the fact that like without either lots of people donating like a little bit of money or like just a few really freaking rich people like theater is hard to keep open like uh, I just for me I'm like that's my entire takeaway from this film it's not like be confident and like you should just do stuff and like you should totally show your disinterested husband how awesome you are by singing on stage and still not necessarily being recognized for the housework you were doing before yeah that was <laughs> That was a weird subplot for me because, like, it was only after she started, like, pursuing things she cared about that her husband, like, became acknowledging of, like, the the struggle to be acknowledged for what she was doing she was having before. It, it, that was... Their actual relationship issue <laughs> did not get addressed. Um, Theoretically, it's just magically fixed because like, oh, you're awesome now, so I'll help take care of the kids. <laughs> um, or, or I don't know, because she didn't make money from that performance and uh, it's not established whether they go on to have actual careers in theater or performance. Because um, the end of the movie is just, yay, the theater's open, not anything that happens to any of the characters afterwards um which like i guess lots of movies in that way but for me uh like nearly nearly none of the like characters actually resolved like they did the thing like to even get a a resolution for the gorilla his dad had to break out of jail to say like son i love you and music is worthwhile um the elephants, like, parents are never seen again. Her, her mother and her grandfather. Um, like, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, like, the weird subplot with, like, the, like, raccoons that wouldn't leave. Um, pandas? Red pandas? Are they red pandas? Oh my god. Um, I think they're red pandas, uh, but like, and how they will, like, won't leave, and then he tries to actually, like, speak their language and accidentally says something insulting, and then they're just gone. <laughs> like, that was weird to me. Like, that was, like, it was a funny haha -ha joke, but, uh, like, I think it went on too long and therefore, like, set up too much and didn't pay off. <laughs> um, I don't know. It, that was just weird to me. Um, like, oh gosh, what even, what were the other animals? Like, I don't know, like, I guess the mouse, they, uh, do they establish whether the mouse gets out of debt or not? I don't, I don't remember. Like, the mouse is in debt to some completely separate mobsters from, from the gorilla thieves. Um, yeah, it's never, like, established whether he m makes enough money to pay them back. No one's, like, financial troubles are established. Um, I do like, there was one thing I liked, the, the hedgehog, the, like, punk rock hedgehog who, um, whose boyfriend leaves her for being a sellout. Um, I like that they, they established that 
the the guy kind of looks like he changed his mind but i really enjoy that they did not establish those characters trying to get back together or anything because i definitely <laughs> that's that's something that i think other films would have done like oh here's your boyfriend back because you know you did the thing and now he realizes you're awesome um because no you don't want that boyfriend back because he was terrible to her um so, uh, so I like that they didn't do that when I was kind of concerned that they might. Uh, that was great. Um, it was a little weird. It was a little weird that she came out in the pink dress. Like, I don't get it. Because it wasn't her style. And it was all about how he fin uh, the koala finally like recognized her style and was like, No, that's actually really cool. Go do that. But she puts on the dress and like a jeans jacket and sunglasses. Which is a style, a style I even like. It is still not the established style that she had. And so it was weird that they were like, well, she's a pop punk princess now instead of like punk rock, except that she's still like playing like a punk rock song, just, just dressed like more like a pop star and I don't I don't understand there because they didn't they didn't actually establish them trying to find an equal ground between the two it was no you need to do this you need to do this well this is me and then finally when he heard the song she wrote he was like oh you know what that is good like <laughs> Like, and, and just like a totally, like, flippant, like, oh, well, that resolves everything way, too. Um, and not like a, oh, you know what, I'm sorry, I never listened to you before. This actually is really good, you should do this. Just like, oh, did you write that? Yeah, do that. And then walks away. It's so, this film was so weird to me. So weird. Like, again, what with, like, suddenly being a, a performer fixing a marriage problem <laughs> like essentially that was a marriage problem that was like it wasn't just that she was like a bored wife um it was that like she and her husband legitimately were not communicating well <laughs> and her suddenly being like famous uh, does not fix their communication problem i just uh like i don't know i'm probably I might even be forgetting some of the characters. Um, like, I don't know, I guess it's kind of cute, like the, like the sheep, the like, f rich sheep guy who, um, has like no direction in life, like, I guess finds out he likes sound mixing? I don't know, he gets roped into it at the end and they don't, they don't establish him like, I'm going into this career now and then like maybe his parents being like proud of him for that or like whatever uh, cuz honestly if <laughs> it's another career his parents uh, might have to support him through because um, again like working in that kind of field isn't always super profitable <laughs> um, I work paycheck to paycheck <laughs> um, but you know like you don't really want to address, like, that exact issue, but, like, I don't know, it could have been nice, it could have been nice to have, like, one scene after the theater opened where they were either, like, actually putting on a musical or they were just rehearsing their next, like, performance piece, like, uh, and, like, show the sheep, like, being the audio guy, and show, I don't know, like, just, just, like, show, like, the actual, like, hey, they're all working, and, and, and continuing to better towards that, like, goal, whatever that goal really is, I don't know, like, they all certainly wanted to do it once, but did they all want to do it for the rest of their lives? Did they all want to do it for a time and then quit? Did they want to do it part-time? Did they, like, a lot of questions that, uh, I am only asking because I'm an adult. <laughs> like, I'm an adult overthinking a children's movie. <laughs> Has, 
I have more problem with the way the mic that the mouse was holding the microphone. I can suspend my belief that a mouse is talking and singing. Fine, whatever. Like, I've been exposed to that my entire life. The way the mouse is holding the microphone, though, screw you guys. <laughs> like, um, and that's just, that's just what it is to me. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna try to wrap this up in, like, a few sentences. Um, I didn't hate the movie. Um, it's, it's obviously just like a pop jukebox vehicle, um, to, yeah, it's, it's like a, just a feel good, like, dance in your seat, or, you know, w once it was, cause I watched it on Netflix, like, one, once it was on video, like, kids dancing in their living rooms or whatever, like, all of that, um, and it, it it's very, it does very good in that regard, like, I don't necessarily, like, enjoy most of the music that's in it, um, but I, I hate a lot of music, to be honest, um, but, like, for what it is, like, a bunch of, like, upbeat pop tunes going on, like, a bunch of musical montages that they just throw at your face, and they look cool, and they sound great, and they make you feel, like, happy, and so it was a very successful film on that part. And it's just very interesting to me that I was able also to take away a very real-world um, look on it. Kids wouldn't get it because it's something you have to know a little bit about, at least, to get that aspect of it. But the the aspect of, like, the, the fear of failure and whatnot is... is... is all right. It's there. But the fact is... There's also an aspect of, in theater, you can do everything right and just not get the audiences and not make the money and still fail. People can love your musical and you can still not make enough money. Your musical can be critically acclaimed as like the best musical and you still might have to close in a few months because you just cannot afford to keep this show open. And that's like the the unspoken underline story that I got and that I was like kind of glad to see because I, I, I would love to see like a children's film that was even more real about that. Um, and hopefully not in, like, a disheartening way. Like, I don't want to discourage kids. Like, everyone, everyone all along my path uh, was, like, it's really hard to be an actor because there's only so many spots allowed in Hollywood and, and they seem like they're getting fewer and fewer and people are always going to want to cast Jennifer Lawrence again rather than casting a new person. Um, and those are facts of of life. Um, and I, I've been told that all my life, like theater is not profitable. If there's literally anything you think you might want to do other than theater that would make you money, do it. Um, but for me, there was, there was nothing else I wanted to do. Um, and it, it really takes an understanding of that. And I think, I think kids movies that could delve into that more like this film and somehow still keep it positive would be, uh, great. But then again, I really have no idea. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, I saw Sing, and I did not hate it. I'll <laughs> see you guys next time. Bye.